Hi guys, so uh, today I'll be doing the uh, giveaway results for the Local King um, Fleeting Beauty stamp set. So they had sent this in so I could give away. And um, so that was really kind. And the results will be coming up in just one second. Um, just real quickly, I want to um, let you know about some sales that they have uh, going on. Well, so Lisa did this thing. She called it like the 12 uh, challenge. 12 card challenge or 12 project I'm not sure what she wants to call it but it has to do with doing 12 uh, challenges on 12 sets of um, stamps and dies there's something like this I believe these are probably part of the uh, sale um, I you know there's a lot going on with it so I can't really explain all of it right now in this video or um, you know I don't really have it off the top of my head but she does have different sales where like you buy a combo set or you go to a combo set you get some paper free you get free shipping you get um the corner dies the little Asian corner dies that she calls them um there's if you buy two if you buy four if you buy six if you buy the whole set and you'll see and there's uh images or types that look like this so I just wanted to show you some of them that I have I have tons more and I've done other videos using them so maybe I'll link some of those videos in the description box so um these are items I had picked up um on my own um not too long ago but I will uh, try and make videos on these of course these are some of the newer ones that I had picked up and then today I'll be using this peacock uh, set just to do a quick card since we're here already so um, I'll be using this one uh, again I items that I picked up myself and this is an item that she had sent for um, for the uh, giveaway so I will uh, draw the name and show you that winner right now Okay, guys, I will try to make this quick because sometimes it sounds like I'm underwater with this recorder uh, screen capture. So I'm on the Local King Rubber Stamp Fleeting Beauty video, of course, and um, there were 259 comments. Number one being the first comment that came in and 259 being the very last one. Uh, and that's how I just number them, basically. Um, and so when I go to random.org and I put in 259, 163 is the lucky winner. So counting up to 163, that is Tammy Settles. And she said, please enter me. Thanks for sharing. So Tammy, you've won uh, one of the uh, Flea Beauty uh, stamp sets. So uh, congratulations. Please get in contact with me within 48 hours. My email will be in the description box. But we'll talk about a little bit more about that. So thank you so much and congratulations. Okay, so congrats, yeah, and go ahead and contact me with my information. that will be in the description box. So I just realized I made these backgrounds for Busted Out, and I haven't shown Busted Out yet. So I guess in my mind, I'm going to have to show that one first before we do this. And I usually like to do my giveaway videos, the results, first thing in the morning. But um, today it's going to be later in the day, so I apologize for that because I know a lot of times people want to know who won, who won. So I made this background. It has, like, peacock feathers, so I thought, well, this will be a fun card to use it with, so, um, or on. Um, but again, I told you guys when I had run it through the kettle bug, if you had watched that video, that um, it left a kind of odd size for this background piece. So I'm going to see what size this paper is and see what makes sense. Um, so it's just about four, which is good, but I think this part... Oh no, five and a quarter. Okay, that's not bad. Okay. Well, okay then. Uh, so I'm just going to cut a piece of purple just to kind of line that. And I'm going to do this at four and one eighth. I know it's very small increments. Four and one eighth by five and three eighths ish. And then I happen to have a piece of paper that's already cut as standard A2 size. So it's, I believe, actually I didn't measure it, but I think it is. Yeah. So it's a five and a half by eight and a half piece of paper. I'm just going to fold it in half again. You can always score it and do all that good stuff so you have a nice, more professional looking crease on your card and I'm just going to glue these pieces down so this is going to be our base and then this too now there's a lot going on in this background so what I want to do I hope you can see that you can barely see that purple peeking out from behind um, is do this set here but to make the peacock stand out I think I am going to go ahead and leave the back cut out in black um, the outer die. So this is, uh, again, this one is called Proud as a Peacock. And it's a combo die set, so it's the die and the uh, stamp. And do remember that throughout the month of July, uh, Lisa gave us a 20% off discount code that you can use. So that's um, 
really great. Actually, purple might look nice. No, I'll go with black. I was like, well, purple would be pretty. You can obviously put the background on anything you want, but I want the peacock to really pop. So I felt like if he was by himself, like I normally would cut just the peacock out, it might get blended in too much with this background, you know? So I feel like I need something else to help stand out. So, um, yeah, so make sure you use the 20% off. That is off regular price purchases, so it will not work on the combo deals that she has going on right now. Um, so let me get this out. Let me get a stamp positioner, some paper, and my markers, and we will make this beautiful topper. Okay, so this is just a piece of Crafter's Companion paper, which I know I'm going to have to stamp twice because it's not like, uh, it doesn't receive the ink the best, but I was thinking about doing uh, glossy paper um, just to make it stand out, but then I was like, oh, there's a lot of glossiness, or not glossiness, but shimmer in the back and then glossy on top. I don't know. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it matte, but of course use whatever paper you prefer. I'm going to put a little piece of tape here just because. All right. And we need to pop out our lady. I just want to make sure there are no bubbles. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. So I haven't chosen my colors. That would save time, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, one last thing I do want to do is just run an eraser over this just in case she needs a little... I don't know if this eraser has enough, but if you just take a pink eraser, you just run it over just to make it a little more um, amenable to receiving the uh, water-based marker instead of it might just kind of uh, beat up. Bead up, not beat up. Yeah, Lisa's doing so many projects right now and like just knocking it out of the park. So um, you want to check those out. Okay, not with this stamp set. This one's just a stamp set I just want to try out today since it'll be kind of quick with the giveaway and everything. So, uh, but you'll see if you go to her site and her page, which stamp sets are on sale. Let's do, I don't know what colors. Maybe those, some purple. Let me see how purple is, purple is. That's pretty. Um, then we have flowers, right? So flowers, let me pick out the colors so I don't bore you all, but I'll be right back. I brought out all the colors I have, <laughs> so. Um, we'll just get started. Black is always there for like decoration, kind of, um, to break up the colors. Uh, so you can always have this sitting in front of you if you want to have some inspiration or just start throwing down some colors. So I do like the bluish colors on the top of the head. So I'll start with this light blue. And you want to make sure to color every area. Don't go like this and have like lines. You see that there's like marks in between that are going to be empty space. You really want to make sure you're really covering the area so you have your marker kind of kind of laid flat. I mean, don't be afraid, but just so that you're covering it. I brought down a lot of that blue. I'm maybe going with this darker blue. So I'm kind of coloring those together. Oh, I probably didn't want to go across like that, but that's okay. So then I'm going to bring this purple from the blue and kind of, kind of blending that together on this page, but not really. Like when I'm getting to the blue area, I'm kind of going in a swirly motion. And then I'm going to use this very, very light green that if it mixes with the purple, it's going to make brown. So I'm not going to mix too much, but I'm going to add some in here. And then maybe back to that turquoise blue. Now, remember, we stamped this twice. You kind of want to remember what you're doing. So um, I don't think it's too crazy. All right. That's pretty. I'm just going to kind of do a little of that. And then we have our green, kind of like a grass look here. And again, you don't have to work super fast. I always kind of give it a little huff, but you don't even have to do that. Usually it just goes right in on stamping, but you know, I always want a little extra good luck to <laughs> make sure that it's really stamped there. So I'm just coloring these areas in. I don't know if there's a lot of green, brown, is it the frame, is it leaves? So it doesn't matter, just put it down. And then my flowers, I'm gonna do pinks and like fuchsia. So I'm gonna go in with this very light pink, trying to make sure I'm covering the whole flower. I 
And after this, I'm just going to go around the frame. Pink, I got a little bit of brighter pink here, just kind of adding some at the base of these little guys. In the center there. And last thing, my brown, I'm using the lighter brown. There are a couple different browns in this set. Oh, there's something else I want to do to the peacock, though. See, there's little areas here. And the top of the peacock, I'm going to do purple on his little crown. And now we're going to come in with black and just do a little, like, around the eyeballs, his little beak, and dot, dot, dot here and there. All right. Now I'm going to huff on this just to reactivate that a little bit. Make sure my paper is flat. And let's go. You would do the same thing with glossy paper or whatever. Oh, I totally missed that middle section. Hold on. Oopsie. All right. Okay, so obviously I need to do it again. And so again, I usually just, uh, again, go over the same spots. I'll just do it very quickly. I usually like to wipe this down. And on videos like this, I always like to just fast forward because I'm literally just gonna go over the same areas again with very similar colors or just the lighter colors is what um, Lisa recommends when you do your second stamping. Um, so again, I'll start with the light color. Let me just make sure, yeah, that's my lighter color and fill this in and you have your reference because you have your little image there of what you did and to be honest it doesn't really matter because the colors will melt together and look nice anyway <laughs> whatever you end up doing so i'm going to go back through and fast forward that a little bit for you I'm getting it everywhere here. Much brighter. Very good. I'm gonna put that to the side for just a second. Wipe this down. And again, I'm just wiping this towel isn't wet or anything like that. It just comes off because it's a water-based marker. But you can also just use a little bit dampened towel if you would like. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this pretty lady out. Oh, I opened the other package. So again, you can cut out just with this, like let's say this is your card base and then you just want to cut it into your card front. Um, she has kiss cut features on here and you'll see what that means in a minute. Oh, actually you won't see what that means because I'm going to run it through at the same time. But um, it'll just cut it into your uh, card base and all these little pieces will pop out other than the image itself. Um, and then if you did want to pop it out, you just have to pop the little kiss cut features. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it out completely because I'm going to make it like a frame. Well, you know what I'm saying, cut out the whole piece. Uh, and then I'm going to cut out a black piece um, just with this outer frame. Let's see here. So I need to eyeball this. Um, again, you can cut this, put this through um, 
your machine just so you have like an aperture that you can then look through and make sure you're trimming and cutting everything exactly where you want it. Or you can just eyeball it like I'm doing and I hope I am. What happens is like she has little holes in there and you can kind of see every single little purple dot. Oh, mine are purple. So you have a pretty darn good idea of where you're cutting if you follow that. So I just want to see a little bit better there. That looks pretty good. And so I'm just going to stick that down. I am going to do this in two. Well, I suppose I don't have to do it in two. I guess I can put this down now. I put a little piece of tape and then we have this one. Okay. Now that's going to leave a white frame. Sorry, you know, now that I think about it, I was just thinking about the white frame. I don't want that frame. I am just going to crisp cut it and then pop it out. We just want the delicate inner part. Unless, I mean, that's just another design option, I suppose, if you wanted the white frame and then the black showing through the back with the white edge. So that's just another, again, little option you can do. Let me look at this again. I just want to make sure I have this lined up right since it moved a little bit. Okay. I'm going to trim this down because I'm going to cut it out with my marquee. And I am going to cut it out with a piece of foam so I can get some embossing. It's the, It will emboss for you anyway because the marquee is so tight. Like You don't have to use the foam. It will still do some of the embossing. But I do like to throw in a piece of foam just to uh, get a little extra oomph. So let me grab that foam and I'll have my machine and we'll cut it out. Okay, I'm just showing this for the gals, people out there that have the marquee. You don't have to, obviously. You can run it through wherever your machine is, cut it, and then emboss it just like you normally do. I just cut it with a little piece of craft foam behind there. So I'll show you what the kiss cut feature means. And you guys know how I do this. I'm just like, okay, should I do this? No, maybe I should do that. Okay, you know what? No, I do want that. <laughs> That's the fun of crafting. And if you watch Lisa's videos, she's very clear on what she's gonna do and how to do it. So I just kind of hop around. <laughs> We're, you know, going as, look at that. Look at that embossing, so pretty. So what I meant to show you, since I was talking about if you wanted to cut this into your card front, if you're new to these kind of um, stamps and things. Let me get this tape off of here. Oy. Yes, it's the low tack, not really tape. And then I always forget to pat it on myself or do something to get the tackiness off. Just touching a little bit of my flower here, so let me just pop that, there you go. And down here we have another piece of tape. Okay, so let's say you just had a card front and you wanted this cut into your card front and you wanted to leave it there. So everything would pop out basically like that and your card is done, right? Obviously this is crooked. <laughs> let's just imagine you cut it into a card front. And see, the whole image did not pop out. But I want the image to pop out. So I'm gonna go through and there's these little tiny kiss cut chads. And she doesn't do like a whole ton of them. It's just enough to hold it on. So when you come through, it's not like the biggest deal to just pop them out. But I think it's a fun design option. I'm going to be careful with this one because it's very dainty. There we go. Okay. And then now I'm just going to take the outer frame and run it through on this scrap of black paper. And I'm going to have a black frame to go behind um, our little image. So I will be right back. All right. This is recording and not doing anything funny. Don't do anything funny on me, camera. All right, there we go. <laughs> and then this will go on here. So let me show you. Oopsie. So if I had left that white frame, it would just have, it would actually be kind of cool because the black would be here and then the little white frame would still be around it if I had done it the way I was thinking. But this is what I was going for. So <laughs> I was just like, wait, hold on. That's not how to do it. All right. And I'm just going to put some glue on the back of this one. This one doesn't have any other pieces to kind of stand up. Sometimes she'll do like little cut pieces that you can kind of stand up. Um, but this is all one layer, it looks like. And I'm just going to put this on as well as I can. A little tacky glue, whatever glue that you like to use. And I'm going to eyeball this as I'm going through here. Okay, I'm going to hold this down for a little while until it feels more dry. Okay, so I think we're good to go on this guy. 
so pretty. She has a few different peacock sets, if you haven't checked them out. I have um, a couple of them. <laughs> All right, I was just uh, going to mention, I stuck down the purple with uh, just a dry adhesive, but the top one, the embossed one, I stuck down with glue, a wet glue, because there's so much texture, you really want a wet glue to seep into the different areas to really hold it together. Um, I mean, you can use a dry glue, it just doesn't, it's not going to hold as well. Um, and yeah, so, okay, so I'm going to pop this up here. You know, all the extra things, you want to put some ribbon behind here. You could have done it underneath this, obviously, before you put your layers down, some twine, some extra stuff. I mean, I think it's pretty extra already for me. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop that up, and then, of course, you would have your sentiment. Um, you know, just place it wherever. And I always leave my cards, not always, but pretty much always, <laughs> uh, without sentiments, because I don't really know what I'm going to use them for. So a lot of times they're just like a note card, like an everyday card, and sometimes... Um, they're actually for a birthday or whatever, so it just depends. So whenever I decide what that card is for, I will add a sentiment. So for right now, I'm just going to pop this pretty lady up over here on this side, because that way I can put sentiment here. And I'd probably put the sentiment above this even, is how I would do it. But do whatever you like. That's so pretty. A lot going on here. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Winner, please get in uh, touch with me within the next 48 hours. Again, the email is in the description box. And I will have links to uh, these items and uh, the busted out where I did the background there and the 20% off code that Lisa has provided us uh, very kindly. And so thanks, guys. I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.